in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why am I here? What is my purpose? Have you ever asked yourself questions such as those? I have no purpose, you might say to yourself. And you moan and you groan. Join the crowd. All creation is groaning, in fact, because everything seems so futile in this sin-broken world as we all await the day of resurrection when we will finally be set free from our bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. In the meantime, things often seem so purposeless. I have no special talents that make me stand out from the crowd. I tried my best, and I still did not make the team. I studied so hard, and I still got a C, a D, or a big fat F. I invested so much time and energy in that relationship, and yet they still turned their back on me. Sometimes you feel like throwing up your hands and saying, why bother? Why should I expend any more energy and effort? Do you suppose Esther ever felt that way? Esther was the queen of Persia. Now, that sounds like a pretty good gig. But unbeknownst to her husband, King Artaxerxes, she is Jewish. About 100 years prior, the Jews had been led away in bondage by the Babylonians until the Babylonians were conquered by the Persians. Some Jews returned to Judea, others stayed, including Esther's family, apparently. And Artaxerxes chose Esther from among his huge harem, in which she had become a part of, in order to replace the previous queen, Queen Vashti. Now, you see, Vashti refused to appear before the king's pals at a party so he could brag about what a beautiful wife that he had, and she says, no way, and so you're out as queen, sorry. And Esther is chosen. So even though now Esther is queen, she must live in a far-off land among a people with foreign customs, false gods, and eat food forbidden by the law of Moses. Not only that, her cousin Mordecai got them into a bit of hot water. He refused to bow down to Haman, the king's right-hand right man, as Haman passed by in procession. And this so enraged Haman that when he found out Mordecai was a Jew, I'm, this thing is really bugging me. My ears are so tiny, it doesn't want to stay on there. All right, if, it's, if I keep doing this, you'll know why I'm doing that, okay? So Haman got so enraged that when he found out that Mordecai was a Jew, he decided to get revenge by convincing the king to issue a decree that all Jews in the empire should be slaughtered, and no decree made by a king of Persia could ever be changed. It was a done deal. And so now you might imagine Esther asking, what good is being queen now? What's the point? Even if I try to go in to see the king and seek his favor for my people, if he does not extend the golden scepter, I will be put to death too along with all of my people. And besides, it's been a whole month since I've even seen the king. A purposeless and pointless life spent living in the opulence of the Persian palace. When Mordecai learned of Esther's uncertainty, he replied with these most famous words from the book of Esther. Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. So Esther resolves to go to the king and she says, I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Even though she knew that sure death could await her, she courageously determines to make an attempt to save her people. And to make a long story short, her plan works. Without being summoned, she enters into the king's court and she bravely stands before his throne. Artaxerxes shows favor to Esther. Mordecai is honored for previously warning the king about an attempt on his life. Haman is put to death. And although the previous decree could not be revoked, the king allows the Jews across the empire to defend themselves and to save their lives. And they did. Now, if you haven't read the book of Esther, uh, check it out. Read the whole thing. You'll enjoy some of the twists and turns at the end of the book as you see how Haman got what was coming to him. 
But here's an interesting point about the book. God is not mentioned, not even once. The only book in the Bible where God is not mentioned. But that doesn't mean that he's not present. He's there all right, hidden, working behind the scenes. He was working to save the people of Judah because there was a promise still to be fulfilled through that people. You see, there was another young Jewish woman yet to come who was going to give birth to a son who would be the savior of not just the Jewish people, but the savior of the world. And this descendant of Judah lived the most purposeful life ever lived. And he saw you in your lost condition, without hope, without life, bearing sin, this sinful condition. And he became flesh for such a time as this, to suffer and to die for you, to forgive your sins, to save you from getting what's coming to you, eternal death, and to give you eternal life. And he continues to be purposefully present and active in your life, although hidden behind the scenes in spoken words and water and bread and wine. So what is your purpose? Now, you may never be in Esther's sandals with a, for such a time as this moment, having to barge into a place you don't belong to save your people or to save anyone for that matter. Without any clear revelation from the Lord, I, I can't tell you any specifics, and I don't get private messages from God, so don't hold your breath. God may have one big moment in store for some of you. He may have, for most of you, a series of not-so-big moments in mind, simple acts of love and mercy in the name of Christ, acts of care and compassion for those around you. But think of that ripple effect that sometimes those works certainly have. Your quiet acts of kindness, mercy, and care, and whatever the case may be. All those things done in the name of Jesus might affect one person who is then inspired to other acts of kindness and mercy and care for others, for their own, for such a time as this moment. Will we ever know what difference our lives have made? Some of us are blessed in this life to receive thanks from those whose lives we have affected, but not always. In the resurrection, is God going to run the video of our life so we get to look back and see how our words and deeds affected others? Who knows? Uh, Revelation 14, verse 13 says of those who die in the Lord that their deeds follow them, although it's not our deeds that determine our destiny. That's God's work of choosing you and uniting you to Christ's work at the cross and the empty tomb and holy baptism. But what about those clips on that video that we don't want anyone to see, those scenes of which we are ashamed? Well, those have all been deleted from the record by the blood of Jesus. So whatever God has in store for each one of you, whether it's a for such a time as this moment or whether it's a here I stand kind of moment, Take courage, take heart, because you have these promises from the Lord given through the Apostle Paul. If God is for us, who can be against us? And for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. And his purpose was to love you and to save you at the cross and to join you to Christ's cross and resurrection and holy baptism. And that means that you have been called according to his purpose. That means that you are a new creation in Christ who does love God. And that means that he will work all things out for your good. And that means your life does have meaning. Your life does have purpose. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.